An in-state rivalry was renewed last season and continues here on a midday matinee on the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. The undefeated 8-0 Chattanooga Mocs are here in Nashville to take on the Tennessee State Tigers looking for their second straight win. I'm Alex Gould alongside CJ Ecke. And CJ, a big reason that the Mocs were able to go 8-0 and beat the 7-0 UAB Blazers on Saturday was because of Jamal Mark Walker. Yeah, yes sir. He had a game-winning jumper against UAB. Thought of a big time performance to keep the Mocs undefeated and they're gonna need the 6-5 combo guard to be at his best today. And for the Tigers, of course, it's the freshman Marcus Fitzgerald Jr. who had a career high 17 against Crowley's Ridge in the win on Saturday. He's literally from up the road from Pearl Cone High School. Had a big game the other night, 17 points, six of 11 from the field. Another local talent doing things for the Tennessee State Tigers. So CJ, Chattanooga was the first team in the country to start 8-0. That tied a school record set back in 1973. Today, of course, they're trying to make history here in Music City. They are rolling, going in to SOCON play next week. It's very good, specifically with these out-of-conference matchups for Chattanooga. Gets to see where they are. A little witness test for them coming into this matchup against Tennessee State. Can they stay undefeated? We're about to find out. Of course, there's Lamont Paris in his fourth season at the helm of the Mox. He reached a 50-win plateau in that historic win on Saturday, good for ninth all-time on the Mox list. And he's looking for win number two against Tennessee State. Will he get, get it today? We'll find here. out. That's Josh Ayeni and Josh Linder. Two Josh's tipping off. The tip is won by the Tigers. So that is Mark Freeman averaging 17 points per game. And he has been dynamite so far this season. This is Joe Hall with the ball, a little off balance and it's good. Monty Joe Hall to start it off as we take a look at the mock starting five. It's AJ Caldwell, Jamal Walker, Malachi Smith, the Locks leading scorer, Josh Ayeni and Stefan Kenich as the mocks go into A&E right now. The transfer from South Alabama has the ball partially rejected. As we take a look at Tennessee State starting five, it's Freeman, Joe Hall, Shaquan Barrett, Shaquem Johnson, and Josh Linder, the transfer from Georgia State. Yeah. So Monty Joe Hall with 12 points against Crowley's Ridge on Saturday. That is Mark Freeman up and under, way too easy. And that is something that Chattanooga has to do a better job of, is guarding the interior. It's a good sign if Mark Freeman's getting to the cup that easily. This is Kenich with the ball, working on Johnson. He's battling him, he's gonna get the bucket. No, he won't, but he will go to the charity stripe and shoot two. So CJ, uh, so this is Stefan Kenich, who's averaging just under 13 points a game. He's a senior forward standing at 6'9 from Belgrade, Serbia. As he hits that first free throw, so the first points for the mocks on the board. He's an 83% free throw shooter on the season, which is good enough for fourth in the SOCON. He's another one of those guys with a lot of size down low. And he's gonna be a handful for Tennessee State if he can continue to get to the line like this. So the score is 4-2 here, just about a minute and a half in. Give you a little bit of more of a radio call here. We have the bug out. So that's Mark Freeman with 15 to shoot. Up and under again, and the move as that shot was partially rejected. That is Smith finding Ayeni who looked to flush it. And it went off the knee of Josh Ayeni out of Zaria, Nigeria. Ball will go to Tennessee State. So for Tennessee State, they had a win against Crowley's Ridge after dropping the first three games of the season. As Joe Hall lines up for three, that one short off the front of the rim and the rebound to Ayeni. Ayeni, another one of those Nigerian kids getting a chance to play basketball at the collegiate level. That was an 
offensive foul, talking about A. Any. That's his first, and he'll sit. And he averages just over 14 minutes a game, despite being a starter for the Mont Paris squad. So Tennessee State leads it four to two here, just over two minutes into this contest. Bit of slow moving half so far. So this is Chiquan, er, Chiquan nice feed. Barrett as he tried to find Couldn't Shaquille it. Johnson. But a nice steal that time by the Mocs. This is Malachi Smith. He's the leading scorer on this mock squad. The transfer out of Wright State. Playing in his first season of eligibility. As he's called for the walk. We highlighted Jamal Walker, of course, for Chattanooga because of the shot he hit. Just a freshman. But that shot was big time to make them and allow them to go 8-0 on Saturday with just 20 seconds left. But Malachi Smith is their leading scorer, averaging over four, 15 points a game and 11 boards, which is good for second best in the SOCOM. Malachi Smith, another, they, they, these guys, they got big guards. Is that move a nice. good one that time by Mason Green, the redshirt junior out of Ellenwood, Georgia. Mason Green. That's a soft touch around the rim. And it's very big for Tennessee State. That's Smith for three. That one off the right of the rim, but an offensive board potentially, and it will stay Mock's ball. A nice job there by the junior Casey Hankton, who checked in for A.N.E. Keys to the game here, partner. First for Chattanooga. Well, they got to play physical. They got big guards, they got a lot of size around there. They have to play physical on the perimeter. And that's what happens. If that happens, they'll stay on the nice list as we like to talk early in the game. And if this is gonna be a naughty game for them, well, they continue to give up a lot of opportunities. 46% from the field. For Tennessee State, if they wanna remain on this Christmas nice list, they've gotta control the tempo. This is a game that they need to control from start to finish, they need to play at their pace, dictate everything that goes on. And if they want to end up on the naughty list with a lump of coal in the losing column, limit the turnovers. So Ken Hitch got fouled. He'll go back to the charity stripe for two more. But the keys to the game, of course, brought to you by Tennessee Highway Safety Office. Designate before you celebrate because fans don't let fans drive drunk. So this is Kenich. We were talking about him at the charity stripe. Good for second best, or excuse me, fourth best free throw percentage in the SOCON so far. As we take a look at this last foul. Yeah, Kenich going up. Monty Johal really not able to get over in time. Kenich upset that he didn't get that to go. So Kenich connects on both free throws. 6-4 game here, just about four minutes in, as that was a clear travel on Yosef Mohammed. That has been some of the struggle, and you just talked about in the keys to the game for Tennessee State has been the turnovers. A major bugaboo for this Tiger group. Unforced errors leading to opportunities for the opposing offense, and it has really hurt them in the early going this season. Speaking of travels, you get another one on this end of the floor, that time by Trey Dooms. We'll head to our first media timeout here, 6-4, Tennessee State. You're watching the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Cam and the Patriots, Monday Night Football on ESPN and ABC. here inside the Gentry, just four minutes into the game, but a nice step back there for Monty Johal got the scoring started. He loves to practice those off-balance shots right around the elbow, and Mason Green with a nice turnaround hook. That is Brian Collins, also known as Penny around these parts, in his third season at the helm of Tennessee State. Of course, he was a Belmont graduate in 2006 helped lead that Belmont team to their first ever NCAA tournament appearance. Nice job trying to get the Tigers to the tournament. 
That's Yosef Muhammad. He is not bashful. Misses off the front rim. But Amori with the rebound and then kicks to Freeman. That is nothing but net. And that is a big reason why Mark Freeman is averaging 17 points a game. Two tee shots early. It's a good sign. So Tennessee State coming out with a little bit of fire and passion so far, but that's Malachi Smith, and that is way too easy. Too easy. So Malachi Smith gets on the board. The mocks had four free throws so far by Kenich, but no one else had scored before Smith's easy lay-in. Green wanted it back. Ten to shoot here for Tennessee State. He's backing down his defender, and that is too That's easy wrong. on the seventh. So Mason Green with a quick four. He averages just four points a game. Quick work down low for Mason Green. You like what you're seeing so far from the Tigers? I think they're doing very well so far, but that won't help. As that three ball lands by the junior guard, Trey Dooms out of Ackworth, Georgia, averaging just under 10 points a game. Open looks, you gotta take them. We're gonna get an offensive foul. That's a push off before the shot on the junior out of Ontario, Canada, Shaquan Barrett. Barrett getting the foul early. Shaquan Barrett, who just checked out, was instrumental in the first, or the, excuse me, the second contest against Belmont, the first home game here at the Gentry. He had 17 points in his home debut, the transfer out of Northwest Florida State. Malika, ooh, kicked out the Caldwell. So this is the talented junior Dunes. You saw hit that triple, but he took too many steps. That's his second turnover so far here in the first half. One too many steps going into the cup. Mark Freeman running the offense here for Tennessee State, averaging 17 points, three rebounds, three assists. He had 16 points, five assists, and three steals against the Pioneers on Saturday as that Winders. was blocked that time by Dooms. A nice rejection that time by the junior on the bigger Josh Linder. Mox couldn't get it, or get, it get their hands around the ball. Tigers will retain possession, but that's a nice defensive play on a much bigger forward. Toombs getting up to get to the, to the ball. Almost looked like a two-handed block that time by Dooms. Dooms, a transfer from West Virginia last season where he played 29 games and averaged 3.5 points. He came on late last season, though, scoring 13 points in games against Mercer and VN VMI in SoCon play. As there's a discussion here, maybe about the clock. You know, going back to Toombs, playing for Bob Huckins at West Virginia. Take a look. Maybe they're looking at who was off of. Yeah, you can see it was yeah. off of Hankton there. Clearly off of him and Tigers. Three to shoot here for Freeman. He's got to go. He chucks one up. That one off the front of the rim and no good. And the rebound to Dooms. This is Caldwell for three. That nope. one no good. He doesn't miss too often, however, as he is second and three point oh, field goal man. percentage. Linder had the ball swatted out, but it looks like they're gonna get a foul. Gonna get the foul here, because that's gonna go on Trey Dooms. That is his first. That's a nice that was a nice high low. They got they got it down there quickly for the the 6'8 Linder as Ayeni subs back in for chat. This is Linder working on Ayeni, trying to go right at him. So that one was deflected, and it's going to go off of the knee of Josh Linder. Nice defense and hands that time by Ayeni. Maintained his position, did not give up any ground to him. 
That's so a, the turnover. A Yeni who's averaging just under six points a game. He started now in nine straight, is the graduate out of Zaria, Nigeria. You ah. see they're going to Ayeni. What a nice give and go. Dooms and one. Count the basket. What a nice give and go between Ayeni and Dooms. Perfectly in sync. He let them know as well. Nice move inside. Quick pass from Ayeni, and that's what you want to see in your bigs. Quick diagnosis and a sharp pass. Ayeni, who only had one assist coming into this game, but a really nice dime that time. Dooms trying to complete the three-point play, and he does. And all of a sudden, now you look up, and it's a nice little run here by the Mox. They lead by one. Mark Freeman splitting the defenders, but he's rejected by Dooms. Mark Freeman split two defenders, but it's the second block of the afternoon for the junior Trey Dooms. Wow. Freeman had it, but that, that's a heck of a play by Dooms. Almost seemed like Dooms was beaten and all of a sudden was able to block it as Josh Linder finishes off the possession nicely. Feathery soft touch from Linder. Tigers back in front. That is what this Chattanooga team does though, CJ. They play defense, they play it with tenacious style. This is Dunes for three, that one well short. Maybe not a great shot selection. Tiger's gonna try to push it. Catch in rhythm. Those are the shots you gotta make. That was Yosef Muhammad wide open. Now Smith gonna work on nice Freeman. Spin, spin move, move off the glass and a charge. Offensive foul, great effort from Shaquan Barrett. We get an offensive foul on Malachi Smith. Look at this replay going to break. Yeah, it looked like Barrett might have had his feet set there as we head to a media timeout. 13-12 Tigers lead. Both schools go back and forth here on a Tuesday matinee in Nashville. To keep Kentucky wild. Back here in Nashville. A Tuesday tap between Chattanooga and Tennessee State. Alex Gould, CJ Ecke. Like the pace of play on both sides so far? I do. Tennessee State, they're making a concerted effort to control the ball. Not as sloppy as we have seen in recent games. As Smith and just working as I say on, that, Freeman steals it. He's looking to maybe flush it home, and he does! And one! A thunder dunk after the steal from Malachi Smith. And there's a reason that Mox fans were so excited to see this guy play after sitting out last season. Man, with authority. Malachi Smith picked a pocket of Mark Freeman, and now he's trying to complete the three-point play. He's a double-double machine for the Mox. He does complete the three-point play. A little bit of momentum after that for the Mox. Smith, who had 16 points and 10 boards against the Blazers on Saturday in the Battle of Undefeateds. He has six double-doubles so far in eight games. The school record, CJ, is 13. He's on pace to break that this season. Oh, wow. And he leads the nation in double-doubles as they're attending so. to Mark Freeman. I think that left hand. But uh, what more can we say? This is why they were so excited about this redshirt sophomore to transfer from Wright State, who is a really good program in the Horizon League. Very much so. The lob that time by Freeman. Linder was able to catch it and put it off the glass and tie the game. Josh Linder using his size down low. He's not, doesn't have the biggest frame when compared to Ayeni and Kenich and some of the guys down low for chat, but he's using some skill and that should be an offensive foul. So another turnover by the Mox. That one's gonna go on Kenich. You're talking about Josh Linder. So far this season, averaging just over seven points a game, 
but he's shooting a blistering 62% from the field. Get those catch opportunities around the rim. Makes life a lot easier for Tennessee State. I really like his length down low, and he's got skill to go along with that frame. Nice and jumper. You gotta like that jumper by Shaquan Mayer. If he can catch those in rhythm, knocking down those mid-range, mid-range jump shots are a bit of a lost art when you're watching basketball. It's all about the long range shooting. And while that's important, if you can get those 15 footers to go, it keeps games close for you. Dooms thought about it. Amori letting him shoot and he does. That one's short, but it gets his own miss. No one boxed out Dooms. And the baseline referee will say it went off of Yosef Muhammad and it will stay Mox basketball. Yeah, we're gonna need a replay. That's him. Take a look at this again. Oh yeah, it looks like it came off of Yosef Muhammad's foot. It looked like actually a good call by the baseline referee. This is Kenich for three. That one well long off the back iron and the rebound to Muhammad. Good eyes by the official there. Nice Ooh. give and go that time, but Yosef Muhammad again, second time he has forgot to dribble the basketball. Tigers have been doing a good job to this point, avoiding those unforced errors, and well, they got they got them that time. And this is the time, too, for Tennessee State to try and pile on some points when Malachi Smith is not on the floor. All that aside, we're about halfway through the first half. It's a two-point game here. Tigers in front. So with everything that's been going on, I like how the Tigers have remained poised and kept the game close. So we'll see here with Smith on the bench, we'll see who they run the offense through, and that's Ayeni, and that's too easy as Linder didn't get the hand in the face. Just right around the free throw line. Quick pick and pop. Oh. The lob and the bucket. An alley-oop from Freeman to Shaquem Johnson, and the flush that time way too easy as he got a pick on the backside. That's what the Tigers can do if they get those opportunities. It's still a supremely athletic group of Tigers. And when they're playing well, they can get those opportunities. And here comes an opportunity to push. Tennessee State looks to push. This is a three ball on the way. That one right of the rim, no good. That didn't, time by Amori Womack. Didn't line it up all the way. It seems like the mocks with Malachi Smith on the bench, they are running this offense through the big man, A.N.E. down low. This is a drive to the basket. That one off the front of the rim that time by Jamal Walker, the freshman we highlighted in pregame. You love how the pace is picked up a lot here. Take a look back at this superb pass by Mark Freeman as Johnson slipped behind the defense. Shaquem Johnson making things happen really really underrated player the Tigers have the senior out of Youngstown Ohio strong finisher at the rim there's a reason Sha Sha Shaquem Johnson led the OVC in field goal percentage because of dimes like that last one we saw from Freeman an easy flush and finish as the Tigers turned it over you love that defensive series from Chattanooga sort of sort of bodying Mason Green to the baseline, forcing him to make an awkward pass and it hit the baseline. So Chattanooga's looking for a lot of history today. As we mentioned, they tied the previous record to start the year going 8-0, set in the 1973-74 season, just about 50 years ago. It's been a fabulous start for the Mox as Smith is back on the floor. That triple in and out that time by Casey Hankton. This is Shaquem Johnson down low off the glass. Might have been partially blocked that time by Caldwell as Dooms looks to push. Good defense at first by Jackson. 
and this will be a foul, and Dooms will go to the line and shoot two when we come back from the break. Really good one here in Nashville, folks, between Tennessee State and Chattanooga. 19-17 score on the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN+. Cam and the Patriots, Monday Night Football on ESPN and ABC. Back here inside Gentry, 7.54 to go here in the first half between Tennessee State and Chattanooga. We'll take a look at this series history. As they have met more than two times, but obviously their last meeting coming last season on November 9th in a thriller, a 59-57 Chattanooga win. It's always bearing out as a low scoring game between these two. This really does have has similar pace to that game last year as Dooms misses the first free throw. Last year on November 9th, as Dooms misses both at the charity stripe, last year, Carlos Marshall Jr., the preseason second team Ohio Valley Conference member who's out until at least mid-January so this season, not on the floor this year, but he led all TSU scores with 16. And then for Chattanooga, it was David Jean Baptiste who had 11, and so did Matt Ryan. Well, Matt going to the free throw line here. So Womack will go to the line here and shoot two for Tennessee State. And it looks like they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna get Hankton for the for the foul. Womack connects on the first, averaging just above a point per contest is the redshirt freshman of St. Louis, Missouri. Of course, redshirt last season, but he's another guy that Penny was really excited about coming into this year. Absolutely, he's a redshirt freshman and he's got the he's got a bigger build than a lot of the other guards on this roster. So Womack looks silky smooth from the line there and now it is a four point lead for the Tigers. Trying to find a way to upset the eight and O Chattanooga Mox. That will be a hand check foul on Green. That here series history, of course, as we had mentioned, is presented by Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, partner with us to protect Kentucky's wildlife heritage. Tigers in the penalty. So that's a one and one by Kenich, who doesn't miss much at the line, but on the last two trips now, the Mox 0 for 3 from the free throw line. It'll help him keep this game close. Points might be at a premium going forward, so Tigers you got really to not work on Hankton. Got to knock your free throws down. Oh, kickball. Get a kickball there. Shot clock a reset to 20. Tennessee State, who was picked sixth in the preseason poll after finishing fifth last season with an 18 and 15 overall mark and nine and nine in OVC play. Of course, their first two games of the season were canceled due to COVID-19, as have so many games around the country. They were supposed to open up the season at home here at the Gentry against Coppin State, and then go on the road to Conference USA opponent Marshall. Two to shoot here for Green. Couldn't get it to go. That three well off the mark by Caldwell, but an offensive rebound by Walker. But that was rejected partially by Green down low. And then the nice tap out to get the Tigers going, and that turns into a bucket. How smooth is he? I mean, how smooth is Mark Freeman? Silky smooth. Mark Freeman looked off the defender like he was going to pass it. Instead took the mid-range jumper just behind the elbow and extends the largest lead of the game for Tennessee State at six points. Smith thought about it. He's working on Barry. This is a one-on-one -on -one situation. 
but really good defense by the junior out of Ontario. Tigers length is bothering Chattanooga defensively. Excellent minutes from Mason Green who checks out. So a really nice defensive stop. It's I wouldn't want to stand in the way of Malachi Smith. Uh, no. <laughs> Smith with that 6-4, 205 frame. As Freeman wants the triple as that one goes in and out, but we will stay here as I believe we're gonna get another foul called underneath on Casey Hankton. Tennessee State with an opportunity to extend this lead. And so far, Tennessee State, they've been the better team. That's why you see it on the scoreboard there, because they lead by six. They're getting these touches down low in this. Linder, the transfer from Georgia State. Is this going to be number three on Hankton? Yes, it is. That is Casey Hankton's third personal with 5.23 to go here in the first half. And are you surprised they're not subbing out number one in blue and yellow? I'm a little surprised. As Linder misses the free throw. Josh Linder three for seven before that free throw attempt. Now three for eight on the season. Showing some confidence here. Hankton who commits three fouls in a row misses the three point basket now as Freeman saved it with five to go. Sort of tight rope the baseline there. This is the exact style of play that both teams really like to run. Kind of slow the offense down a little bit, lull you to sleep. And so far it's played to TSU's advantage. We got a jump ball, look at that. Battle for the ball underneath between Smith and Linder. The possession arrow favors the Mocs. Yeah, we got off of the miss, Josh Linder, very active down low. Well, the possession arrow will go to Chattanooga. So speaking about Chattanooga, we're talking about a lot of history here, but their 10-game non-conference win streak is a school record. This is a school that has won 11 regular season SOCON titles, 11 tourney titles, and last went to the NCAA tournament in 2016 as Malachi Smith backs down to smaller Freeman. And the ball will head over to TSU. You have to take advantage of your conference, of your non-conference schedule. Specifically when you're in a mid-major program or conference like the SOCON or the OVC or the Horizon League. Take care of your conference schedule so that you have a better chance of getting into the big dance when conference play rolls around. These schools both playing their last non-con as the flush that time by Linder. And he was feeling himself after that one. That will extend the largest lead of the game for TSU by eight. Josh Linder has been so active today, and I am very impressed. We'll get a foul on the floor this time by Shaquem Johnson, which will take us to the final media timeout. So we will step aside here at Gentry. 25-17, Tigers late. Just 3.52 to go here in the first half between TSU and Chattanooga. But let's look at the OVC standing so far. Only two games played by most of the schools. Tennessee State, though, near the bottom after dropping two to Belmont. It's hard when two of, it's hard when two of your conference games are your only games that you've played. This, the, this game is going to be very important going forward. It'll establish a lot of confidence for Tennessee State if we're, as we go forward in the season. As Kenich, this is his fourth trip to the charity stripe so far, connects on that first. But we were, we were focusing in on Josh Linder here 
as Kenich gets the second one to go to cut the lead to six. But he's a senior, 6'8", 210, out of Kathleen, Georgia. He's shooting a blistering 62% from the field. And you can see why so far tonight, doing it in all facets. He's got the three or four from the field, and he's been making it happen around the post. He's been very active today, and I he's keyed this run for Tennessee State. That foul's going to go on Malachi Smith. That is two now on him with 3.39 to go. That will send Freeman, a 90% free throw shooter, to the line. I wonder if you're... Lamont Paris, do you think about taking Smith out after this? It yeah. looks like the answer is no. I was going to say, I don't think he will because uh, the other day uh, against UAB, Chattanooga only played with eight guys essentially. They had eight guys on the floor and really six to seven rotated in throughout the game. Lamont Paris does not go to that bench very often and doesn't really have a deep bench. If we can get a what shot, a as that's a just terrific feed that time over to Malachi Smith, and he finishes. But if you can take a look at that bench over there by Chattanooga, they only have about four guys over there uh, dressed and ready to go. So this team's only traveling about nine guys as we get an offensive foul. That's going to go on Ravel Moody. But take a look at that bench. It is not deep, CJ. I, in hindsight... When you think about everything that's going on, it sort of makes sense as to why you've got a very short bench, specifically if you're UT Chattanooga. And that really is some of the storyline as well is Chattanooga's got to stay out of foul trouble. And you can talk about it more, but I think that's why TSU has been going right at their big men down low. It gives you a better opportunity to make things happen down low. You're afraid to foul. You're really afraid to play your style of of defense, if, if you if you like to get physical, if you like to get aggressive, if you're in foul trouble, it really limits the way you play as an evidence right there, Josh Linder. Just talking about Josh Linder. He now leads Tennessee State, tied with Freeman for eight points tonight, and he made a any kind of skate a little bit there. Have to be impressed today. This is a different Tennessee State team and a different energy than we've seen all season. That's taken away by Moody. It looks like a three on two for TSU as Moody wasn't sure what to do with the basketball and turns it right back over. He sort of hesitated on the pass and yeah, there you go. But that's what Tennessee State likes to do. They like to get out and run off of those opportunities and like to get odd man breaks going, going forward. So if you are Coach Lamont Paris, I'll put you in the coach's corner here with two minutes to go. Who are you setting the offense up for? It's gotta be the guy that got you to this point. It's gotta be Malachi Smith. So instead they go inside to Kenich and he's gonna go to the line here and shoot two. So they are in the double bonus now, are the box. So Kenich, an 84% free throw shooter, will go back to the line now for the fifth time today. Kenich making a living at the free throw line. Kenich makes the first one. He's a transfer from Cleveland State where he averaged 7.2 points. Another Horizon League guy coming over to Chattanooga in the SoCon. He shot 46% from the field for Cleveland State. He competed on the Serbian national team, the U-20 team, not too long ago. He's from the capital of Serbia, Belgrade, of course, where tennis star Novak Djokovic is from. Here's a cool fun fact for you, CJ. You know, I'm a big fan of fun facts. <laughs> as we're gonna get another foul as Ayeni's gonna get his second personal. And that is 19 fouls now here in the first half of the mocks. That'll send Linder, who has kind of struggled at the free throw line so far this season. And his struggles continue. Now just three of nine on the season with a minute and 30 seconds to go here in the first half. Back to that point. 
a decidedly international flavor for the Mox. A lot of people across the country. This is Malachi Smith, and that is just too easy. Working on the smaller guard at Walmack, just backed him down and punished it off the glass. I think we would label Malachi Smith a combo guard. He's got the size of a wing, but the skill of a guard, and he's making himself known here today. Going back inside to Linder. He's working on a Eddie. He thinks he has a mismatch, and that one's off the front of the rim with 50 seconds to go. So it really feels like Tennessee State's played a much better first half, but it's just a three-point game. This Chattanooga team right in it, and a chance to potentially tie the game here before half. But that's not gonna get it done. So that's a turnover for A.J. Caldwell as he stepped on the baseline. So we're gonna get a timeout Great team by defense. Brian Collins and Tennessee State. We will stay here. We like to have fun on this broadcast, right? It's a Tuesday matinee, and we hope that you've enjoyed your Christmas shopping. Hopefully you're taking a break and watching this game. But let's talk about some trivia here. Of course, the Mocs are 8-0. They were the first team to go 8-0 so far in the 2020-2021 season. But the question is, CJ, who are the other two D1 teams currently 8-0? You can think about that. You don't get to answer, but fans back home can tweet at us, Alex Gould 714 and put hashtag OVC trivia as the answer will be revealed after halftime. But the question, of course, who are the other two Division I teams currently 8-0? Hmm. That's something you'll have to think about, Mark. You're the X's and O's guy. I think you'll, you'll, you'll find a way to get this, but it's not an easy question. It is not now that I think about it. I, I'm trying to cycle through every school that I know and I'm, I'm drawing a blank for once, which is not normal. You don't, you don't stump me very, people don't stump me very often, so. Listen, and I'm the exact opposite. People stump me about 24 seven, so. I was lucky I got to come up with that question. <laughs> that was the only reason I knew the answer. Mm. So Mark Freeman has it up top. About an eight second differential between game clock and shot clock. As Freeman's got to go, he's got four to shoot. Really slow developing play here. This is Joe Hall. Does he have enough time? Did he get it off? He did. Off the front iron. Two to shoot for Dooms as it's stolen. Dooms going to have to heave it up. He does. The prayer does not go. And we will go to halftime with a Tennessee State three-point lead. They lead it 28 to 25. A really defensive first half. Could see a lot of the same in the second half. Adjustment stats and highlights coming up at the break. Bills, Cam and the Patriots. Monday Night Football on ESPN and ABC. We are back here inside the Gentry. We'll take a look first for Chattanooga. An easy basket there by Malachi Smith. Double-double machine making it happen. Mark Freeman as well. I like the pace that they've played with. Ayani knocking down jumpers. It's been more of a defensive battle here at Gentry Center. Nice backdoor cut to tune. Tennessee State defensively able to hold Chattanooga to just 30% from the field. As Mark Freeman knocking down a jumper here. Bit of a back and forth affair. And the Tigers continuing to make things happen. Tigers shot 44% from the field in the first half. Sort of right around their, their, their average this season. So Mark Freeman, That's who leads all scorers, him and Josh Leonard both have eight points for Tennessee State. Then of course, for Chattanooga, it is nine for Malachi Smith. Take a look at the stats there. You just mentioned him. 44% shooting for TSU and then 30% for Chattanooga. I mean, that is the difference, but not much of a difference. What we really probably should have highlighted was the defensive efforts on both sides. But something standing out to me is just nine turnovers for Tennessee State. They've taken care of the ball in the first half, and we'll see if that continues going forward. 
We will step aside here, about 10 and a half minutes till second half, 28-25 in favor of Tennessee State. Again, you're watching the OVC on ESPN+. Plus. Back here inside the Gentry in Nashville, where Tennessee State is on top by three, 28 to 25. Alex Wolf, CJ Eckley, appreciate you joining us. We talked about the trivia. Of course, the mocks are 8 0. Who are the other two Division I teams to go 8 0 so far this season? Here is the answer. Hmm. The Xavier Musketeers. CJ and the Drake Bulldogs. We did get a response, and it was the correct response. At Yellow Scarmori tweeted us and said, hashtag OBC Trivia, Drake and Xavier only got this because I looked at the preview for the chatty TNST game, LMAO. <laughs> bravo, my man, bravo. Congratulations, we appreciate it. We don't have any prize other than thanks for watching, and uh, we're a boss for getting that right. But. Coming into the second half here, about 30 seconds till they get underway. Three-point game for Chattanooga. How did they win this game and go 9-0? Well, you got to get more physical down low. Your the Tigers are killing them in the post. You have to find a way to get more opportunities for the Malachi Smith, for Kennedy down low. That's the best way to neutralize the Tigers going forward. And for Penny Collins and company, how did they come away with a huge home victory here at the Gentry and knock off an undefeated team? They need to continue to do what they have been doing. They've taken care of the ball. That is something that's very important for the Tigers going forward. I think this is their fewest turnovers in one half this season. They've taken care of the ball, and it's gotten them a lead going into the second half. They need to continue what they have been doing. Talking about that trivia question, too. We're talking about Chattanooga being 8-0, and then, of course, Drake and Xavier. Drake, a part of the Missouri Valley Conference. I got to talk to head coach Darren DeVries and interview him last year. CJ, he is one of the nicest guys in all of the planet. He deserves to have that success. Then, of course, Travis Steele for Xavier, taking over for Chris Mack and company. Chris Mack went over to Louisville, but he has done such a mighty fine job in the Big East. This is a good start for Tennessee State out of Shaquem Johnson. What a pass inside. If he gets around the rim, he will more than likely finish. So a quick strike. This is Kenich for three wide open, and you Whoa. can't leave him open from beyond the arc. That is Stephen Kenich. A big man that can shoot is well, well desired at the professional ranks these days. You're talking about big man, 6'9 forward, who's shooting 33% from beyond the arc, but looked tremendous shooting that one. As he now takes it away from Linder, we'll get a tie up and a jump ball that will go back to Chattanooga. Talking to Penny Collins, this is right around the season started, OBC Media Day, and know it was handled, hold, held virtually because of everything going on with COVID-19. And he expected some of the newcomers to come in and immediately help in the front court because the Tigers lost Jalen Washington. He was out of eligibility. And I like what Josh Linder has done, proving Penny right so far this year. Malachi Smith missed his shot, got his own rebound, gets it again. This is Kenich now who gets double teamed. The extra pass to Walker for three. And just like that, Chattanooga races the three-point deficit. They lead by one. Extra, extra pass, making things happen. This is now Freeman for the answer on the other end. Well long. That's just struggled a little bit from behind the arc to start this season at just 28%. Kenneth moving around. I think they're trying to get the Tiger bigs away from the paint. So they're using a lot more movement with their bigs. And he almost lost it. Smith was there to corral it. He gets rejected by Barrett. A nice stuff that time by Shaquan Barrett against Malachi Smith. Not easy to block the 6'5 guard. Stay with the play there. I like what she... Stay with it, Shaquan Barrett, and get your hand up. 
There's a reason that the newcomer, Shaquan Barrett, has started all five games now so far this season. And it's not because uh, of the offensive electricity and the way he creates, but it's because of that defensive prowess going against one of the best players in the country. He's long, and he can present problems for guys going into the paint. Joe Hall. Caldwell pretty much dared Monty Joe Hall to shoot it, and he did. And that's a big time triple here. Tigers put back in front. Caldwell having a rough go of it. He forced the turnover. First turnover for Chattanooga here in the second half. So the Mocs erased that deficit pretty quickly, but then the Tigers answered. And that's something that Coach Collins has stressed to the team is to, listen, when we give up that lead really quick, let's answer on the other end as Shaquem Johnson does. Count the basket and one. As he'll go to the line and shoot one for a chance at the three-point play. Get him around the rim, rinse, repeat. So that is Hankton's fourth personal here. And again, we talked about the bench for Chattanooga. Very thin. Barrett getting the movement around the rim, getting the bigs away with his motion. And finding Sir Kim Johnson, nice cut to the basket. Alec oh, nice he's open. Finding Walker wide open. He's feeling it. Going to hit the back of the rim. Nice job by Linder to corral that deflection. Good on ball defense that time by Caldwell. He deflects it with 17 to shoot on the shot clock. Tennessee State, who tied a record last year here at the Gentry Complex with 11 wins in Coach Collins' second season at the helm. Of course, one and one so far this year with a loss against Belmont and a win against Crowley's Ridge. So that's good defense that time by Carter. Penny wants to defend his home floor. Of course, limited fan capacity. Pretty much just families allowed in here at the Gentry. Everyone has to be masked up, including us as well. It's the only way to prevent the spread of COVID-19, my friends. They just Malachi Smith going to the rim and rejected by Lander. But I think they got a foul on Barrett before the rejection. So that foul will go on Shaquan Barrett. I don't even, that, that, was, that was nasty. That that's that is how you play defense. Now I think Linder, of course, definitely a nice defensive play, was able to reject that shot attempt from Smith, but I believe they got the left hand on the back of of Smith on Shaquan Bear. Uh, Smith goes one of two from the line. So it just hovers around that one possession game. Neither team pulling away. Sets up for a good finish. We talked about it earlier. 59-57 last year. Shaquem Johnson off the feed from Linder. Could not get it to go. He had it right there. A little out of control. You can tell as we head to our first media timeout here in the second half. Malachi Smith, he's trying to take over a little bit here. As TSU still leads by three here at Gentry on the OVC on ESPN+. Back here inside the Gentry, 35-32 in favor of TSU. Take a look at some of the fans that are allowed here inside the Gentry Center. Looks like a couple of Chattanooga fans there, but mostly, I think for the most part, it's just family that is allowed in at the Gentry as Smith hits that first free throw out of the brick. Yeah, and you you were talking to me earlier. You said it was really warm in here. Free throw good. So Smith hits both. 
and connect. So one point game here, just under 16 to go. These two teams, storyline coming in. Chattanooga only allowed about 65 points coming in. They're on pace to allow a little bit less than that if I'm doing my math correctly. I'm not a great math student, mind it's you. It's a little bit wow. As Mark Freeman steps back and misses. But the, the step up from Tennessee State that we've seen in the first four contests, they've allowed 76 per game. They're on pace to really do a nice job on that points allowed per game so far here. I, I love the I love at love the activity defensively by Tennessee State. They've made significant strides going forward. I like that from Mark Freeman staying in phase. Unfortunately, he got called for the foul. About the seventh time we've seen Kenich at the line. He pretty much just lives there. There's something to pitch a tent and make a home at the free throw line because that's where Kenich has been all afternoon. Very, very skilled on all phases of the game, specifically drawing contact. So we are back to a tie ball game here, 35 apiece. If you have liked offense, well, this hasn't been the game for you, but tenacious defense and ruthless defense on both sides has been the story. So you see more good defense there, but instead we will get a foul and a bump on Tennessee State. That's gonna go on Mason Green. That is his fourth foul of the game. So Yusuf Muhammad will check back in. Tough for Mason Green picking up his fourth foul. That's a guy they'll need down low down the stretch. Alakai Smith thought about it. Pump fake on Womack. He's going to try and back him down. Does it nicely, but nice defense by Womack. Nice defense really by Womack. Really nice Womack. defense, as you just mentioned, by Womack. And that's a turnover. It no. was going to be a turnover, yeah, I was going to say. But well, it looks like the baseline judge overruled it. Referees came together there to make sure they got the right call and the ball will stay with Tennessee State. Take a look at this replay again. Yeah, Caldwell got the bump. Oh, That's nice. Freeman all the way to the hoop. He was quiet there for about 10 minutes or so, and they're going to need him down the stretch here if they want to win this ball game. That was an incredibly quick move to the cup. That's sort of an off balance, all, almost over his right shoulder. Shot to the rim, nice pass. Smith wide open, a nice find that time by Walker. An offensive rebound for Dooms over to Kenich, and he lays it home. Really good find that time by the junior in Dooms. That's Joe Hall over to Shaquem Johnson. Womack for three. He's feeling it. Wow. Oh, two good finds on both ends of the floor. First duels to Kenich. This time for Tennessee State, it's Shaquem Johnson over to Womack, and he buries the triple. I love that pass from Shaquem Johnson as he's driving to the cup. They know how strong he is down low, and he makes the extra pass to Womack, who knocks down the tray. Smith saying, if you're going to keep leaving me open, I'll take it. But he misses again from beyond the arc. He has really struggled here this afternoon from three-point territory. Oh, Another nice good cut. find that time by Shaquem Johnson. Oh, the big man yeah. is facilitating for TSU. As he found a cutting Mark Freeman and an easy two points. Tigers are impressing me so much today. Dooms driving to the basket. And a charge, a Offensive. late charge is going to be called on Dooms. A little bit of a late call that time by John Garrett, the baseline referee. So we'll take a look at this one again. Dooms drives. That's a great take from Mark Freeman. That's a great job. Do you agree with that call? I do agree with the call. It's just out, outside of the cylinder. He didn't move his feet. Great take. Lamont Paris, uh, I believe, was saying something to, to John Garrett here. 
Not sure exactly what they're talking about. But they're going to take a look at something at the monitor again. We, we, we always have to speculate here on what they're looking at. But a little stoppage of play here with 13.04 to go here in the second half. It was a three-point game at halftime. You know, just a five-point Tennessee State lead. So you talked about it. To beat a team that is 8-0, trying to make history and go 9-0 for the first time ever in school history, this is kind of the way you have to play for the Tigers. Absolutely, specifically with the movement that you're getting from the bigs. They're making the extra pass. I love the way the offense has been moving. Tigers being very unselfish. And we'll see if it will pay off in the end. Mark Freeman, spin move off the glass and good. Boy, is he so fun to watch. Just in his sophomore year, was a, really a facilitator last year. Just averaged six points a game, but 17 coming into the night, and that's why. He is very quick and very explosive when he gets to the cup, and that's a blocking foul. That foul's gonna go on Yusuf Muhammad. They got Dunes for the charge last time down the floor, but not this time. Officials in tonight's game, by the way, Kevin Driver, James Hicks, and John Garrett. Done a pretty good job so far calling this one. It has been a good job. Walker, mid-range. That's about the spot where he took that game winner against UAB, but missed short. Jamal Walker, a local kid for the Mox, playing from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And we got a foul. That foul gonna go on Smith, so that's his third personal. Again, if you are Smith, you gotta be careful here because you mentioned it, it, they need him down the stretch with just over 12 to go, or else he'll take a quick breather. Some of your, some of your key guys in foul trouble. Freeman trying to create, he creates for himself, floater is up and good. How tough is that to guard CJ when he looks off the defender like he's gonna pass it and then floats it up? It is, it is really, really hard to defend, specifically when it's somebody with as much quickness and speed as Mark Freeman. You don't know where he's going to go. I equate it. I equate it to a break to a to a breaking pitch in baseball. Hey, and he got bumped. He'll be at the free throw line when we come back. It's the largest Tennessee State lead. They lead by nine. Back here at the Gentry, Mark Freeman stands at just 5'10". He's a sophomore, but he looks like a professor out there on the floor. This school and some guys. He is so quick. He is so athletic. And I talked to him during uh, OVC Media Days and I was held, held virtually. And I asked him where he needed to grow his game. And he talked specifically about his jump shot and overall leadership on the floor. And it's paying dividends tonight for the TSU Tigers. Malachi Smith missed the first free throw for Chattanooga. Excuse me, Josh Ayeni missed the first free throw for Chattanooga. Gets the second one to go. But Mark Freeman, he had 16 points on Saturday. He had 26 in the season opener against Belmont. Again, this is a guy who averages 6.5 points per game, but he averaged 4.3 assists as he goes again. What a move by Freeman, but left it well short and got nothing but air that time. But he was fifth in the Ohio Valley Conference last year in assists per game. This year is one of the top scores. I would venture to say he's one of the most improved players in the OVC to this point. I know there's a short sample size given everything that's going on, but I just love what he has done so far this season. 
And that's something I think you and I were noticing at times in these last couple of games for Tennessee State. Some of the possessions didn't run through Freeman. And I think that's something we, we noticed that he's got to get a touch. It feels like every wow. time down the floor as Freeman oh. found Linder. And he finishes for the three-point play. Potentially at the line. As that, the that's on top by 10. That was a great. That was a. It looked like he was going to take the shot, and then he just the subtle tap to Josh Linder, who finished strong at the rim, and he's going to get an extra free throw. But what about the pass from Mark Freeman? I was going to say, we were talking about that naughty and nice list. <laughs> Mark Freeman's going to be on the nice list this year. I mean, he has just looked so tremendous with the basketball in his hands. His ability to create for himself and force create for his teammates and set up Josh Linder. Talking to Penny last year after some of the games that they played, I, I, I specifically asked a lot about Freeman and his growth. And it's no wonder he trusted him as a freshman with big minutes last year. We're seeing why there was so much trust and there's so much excitement about Mark Freeman going forward. I mean, listen folks, to give you an idea, that's a 5'10", 160 guard taking on a guy who's 6'4", 205, and one of the best defenders in the SOCON. Mark Freeman is not scared to take on anyone, as that's a foul that time on Freeman. That will send Hankton to the line to shoot two. I think the old saying goes, no matter the sport, if you can play, you can play. As you see, he gets called for the foul. But it doesn't matter the size. It doesn't matter what you look like or where you come from, if you can play, there will be a place for you. So Hankton has been in foul trouble all afternoon. And it's not a recipe for success when you only have about three guys off of that bench, him being one of them. But he didn't play in the first five games of the season. He was able to play these last two. He scored three points against UAB on Saturday. He so was, was made two for the arm. when the NCAA announced that the blanket waiver for transfers was going to be approved and everybody who transferred was eligible due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Hankton was open and allowed to play. That's Yusuf Mohammed from deep. He is a guy that they're also trying to get going. Has really struggled so far this year from long range, but that's a 6'9 forward who can stroke it at times from there. And a big triple to give Tennessee State a 14 point lead as we get a foul called on Linda. So about 9.25 left. Chattanooga trying to remain unbeaten, but they're gonna need buckets quickly. Yeah, they're gonna, gonna, gonna get Linda for that foul. And what do you know, Kenich back at the line again. I was gonna say the tent is still at the free throw line as Kenich connects on the first. You think he left his shoes near the door? Yeah, I was gonna say, with, with 9.25 left, 12 point contest, maybe 11 after this free throw from Kenich. As he gets it to go, so 11 point contest. This is something TSU just learned for the first time as a team on Saturday to play with a lead here in the second half. How do they hold on? Do they, you know, do they run a lot of clock here? Do they keep pushing? How, how do they hold on to this 11 point lead and come away with a huge win here at the gym? I don't think you need to change the way you play. But what you do need to do is not turn the ball over. I was gonna say, and that has been a problem all season long, a key turnover here for the Tigers. Now, if you're Lamar Paris and company, how do you find a way to claw back in it with about nine minutes left in the second half. Get opportunities at the basket. What you gotta do, keep keep driving to the cup, get yourself to the free throw line, and just continue to chip away from there. Tennessee not in as much foul trouble in the backcourt, so you may can get some opportunities going to the cup. Talking about going to the cup, that's Smith, that's an air ball, and that's a shot clock violation. 
And that is exactly what you need to do if you're the Tigers and exactly what you don't want to do if you're Chattanooga is run 30 off of that clock and come away empty-handed. I think this is Tennessee State's best defensive performance of the season to date. This is, I'm incredibly impressed with the way they have played together. They have played great team defense. And they've made it difficult down low. That's behind Look the back. Look at the handles by Freeman. Floater no good. And the rebound to Smith. <laughs> behind the back shimmy shake by Mark Freeman. But couldn't connect on the floater. And this is the, mat the matchup you think would be a mismatch. That's Walker for three, and that's a really nice find that time by Malachi Smith. See, so back down Freeman, found Walker for the open triple. Now you look up after the timeout by Lamont Paris, and it's an eight point game. That's a good way to get yourself back into the game. Knock down a couple of those threes. Chattanooga allows just over 65 points a game. That is really tough defense. They are going to need that one with 8.14 to go if they want to come back. And they can't. There's a reason they are 8-0. No. Oh, absolutely. Eight points is nothing with 8.14 to go. Open looks, knock down those shots, and just continue to try and stress the defense, specifically down low. When, Ch when Chattanooga got themselves back into the game, what they were doing, there was a lot of movement, a lot of movement, a lot of motion from their bigs. And we will step aside and take a break here in Nashville, 54-46. squad here trying to come back down eight with just over eight minutes to go Alex Gould CJ Ecke this has been a defensive grudge match it's been a battle between two teams who really want to go into that conference slate with a big time victory and this would be a big time upset for the Tigers here at home and not only that it would be a win that they desperately need to get themselves into good position going into conference play. And they're eight and they're eight minutes away from getting it. They just need to continue to hold. You can see here, 10 on the shot clock. Tigers working a little bit of clock here out of the timeout. They're gonna slow the pace down as much as they can, it seems. And this is Shaquan Barrett. Step back three off the front iron. And a chance for Chattanooga to chip away. Smith just gonna run it all by himself. Left hand off the glass. Really pretty move that time by Malachi Smith to get them within six. You can see him saying to himself, I'm gonna carry us home. That's a good way to do it. Yusuf Muhammad hit a three last time out, but well long this time. And all of a sudden now, Chattanooga has a chance to get within a possession. We will get a foul away from the ball. This will go on Yusuf Mohammed. We will go to break. Chattanooga chipping away. Six point TSU lead. 7.13 to go here on the Ohio Valley Conference on ESPN Plus. Four forty-eight in favor of the Tigers. That's head coach Brian Collins in his third season at the helm of Tennessee State. This would be a staple victory if the Tigers can hold off the mocks here with 7.13 to go. And a victory that Penny Collins loves. Those big moments, those big games, he's used to winning those. All across his coaching career, he's used to those big moments. This is Casey Hankton, one and one, gets the first to go. Now just a five point game. And listen CJ, this really is a battle of a team who knows how to win here early on in the season and a team who has really struggled, finally got that first win against an NAIA school in Crowley's Ridge, but has struggled to, to win games late in the season. That's kind of what you're seeing here as Chattanooga chips away. It will be a big, big one and that 
Looks like we've got a loose ball. I think it's going to be a timeout called by Mark Freeman, actually, as Barrett and Smith were on the ground fighting for the ball. I believe a, a witty play that time by the sophomore and Mark Freeman to call the timeout and retain possession for Tennessee State and avoid the turnover. That is what you call situational awareness. Finding a way to call a timeout before the jump ball is called because jump balls could go either way. And more often than not, it will go the way of the other team. So a very heady play by Mark Freeman. If you're Coach Collins here, out of the timeout, how or in the timeout, I should say, how do you calm the guys' nerves down? How do you calm this team down and tell them, hey, let's go win a ball game here and upset a team at home going into the conference slate? Don't look at the score, but just go out and play. There's seven minutes left in the game. Just go out and play. Just stay loose and do what you've always done. That's a way to come out of the timeout if you're the Tigers. Defined from Freeman, the flush for Shaquem Johnson. And the lead is back to six. That's a good way to keep things going. Tigers trying to get some momentum. That's Hankton working on Johnson off the glass, out of control. Johnson with the flush and then a defensive stop as Freeman looks to push. Johnson backs it out nicely. Freeman going to run some clock here. Just under 6.30 to go. Freeman's used that spin all day long. To Linder, gets the body. No foul, but gets the bucket. Josh Linder now with 13 for the Tigers. And that lead is back up to eight. Both Freeman and Linder in double figures. Malachi Smith, stutter step move to the bucket. Gets fouled and will go to the line to shoot two. That's something, too, we haven't seen a lot this year. The season is young. It is early, right? But with all those cancellations for TSU, that is something that we haven't seen. A, a lot of plays like that out of the timeout as Smith gets the first to go. But a lot of plays like that out of the timeout with a big find from Freeman and the flush for Johnson to keep the momentum on their side. As they continue to play, they continue to figure out who they are as a basketball team and who's going to be where during situations like that, it's like coming out of the timeouts. So this is a, it's a Tennessee basketball team really still finding their identity, and they're doing it in a big way here tonight. So Smith connected on both free throws. He's got 18 now. He and Freeman lead all scorers on both sides of so the guards who have guarded each other all day long with such a terrific and pretty battle today as Shaquem Johnson with the left hand could not finish rebound to Smith. That was halfway down and then it popped out. TSU thought there was a travel. Instead, it's a rejection that time by Devontae Lanier who just came in. Kenich got that shot partially blocked. And that is exactly why they brought Lanier, the junior out of Huntsville out of Alabama into the game to guard Kenish down low. Well, that and Mason Green is in some foul trouble, so they need some, some, some help off the bench. Got a mismatch here. Mark Freeman wants it. He's working on the bigger Kenich. He wants an ISO play here, folks. Freeman's going to pull up for three in the face of Kenich. Could not get it, but an offensive rebound for Monty Joe Hall. This is exactly what somebody like Mark Freeman wants. And now they switch. Smith back on Freeman, now it's Hankton. Lanier's gonna take it, find Freeman. Deep triple, that time by Freeman again. Misses, but a Shaquem Johnson rebound. Joe Hall for three, that one no good. And an empty possession after three missed three-pointers for the Tigers, keeps it a six-point advantage. That could be a big play in the game if it doesn't go the Tigers' way. Talk about a big play and a big man taking over. Malachi Smith now with 20, a game high, and it's just a four-point game with just over four to go. Think about what just happened, that turnaround. Three misses, three opportunities on that one possession, and then Chattanooga goes down and get, gets points out of it. 
Freeman working clock, 10 to shoot here for the Tigers. He's gonna get a pick from the Lanier, and it's another mismatch here on Kenich. Freeman wants it, finds Shaquem Johnson, reversed, got blocked by the rim. He didn't get deep enough. This is Walker for three, he got it! The freshman Jamal Walker with ice in his veins, much as he did on Saturday, buries a big three here to send us to the media timeout. It's a good one here in Nashville. 58-57, Tigers on top, stick with us. Jamal Walker with the game winner on Saturday in the Battle of Undefeateds. He's just a freshman, folks, but a major three-pointer here to send us to break to cut the deficit to one. We got ourselves a good game here. The freshman making it happen from deep. Ready. Jamal Walker, who redshirted last season. He's a Chattanooga kid. There's a reason that Lamont Paris and company was so excited. He really stepped into the starting role when David Jean-Baptiste announced that he was entering the transfer portal. And he has stepped up so nicely as we have 10 to shoot for Tennessee State. Freeman trying to run the baseline. He finds an open Joe Hall for three. He does not connect, but another second chance opportunity here for the Tigers. I love it, Shaquem Johnson tracking down that loose ball. Sometimes it's just gotta bounce your way. This is Barrett now up top working on Walker. Now he finds himself on Kenich. Freeman and Smith, this has been the battle all day long. Step back three, four, Freeman is no good. Rebound to Chattanooga and all of a sudden, with just under three to go, the Mocs have a chance to take the lead here in Nashville. Smith wants the ball right now. Smith wants the ball. He's going to find Kenich. Kenich for three. Pump fake. He finds Smith. Smith for three for the lead. He got it. Malachi Smith with the biggest three of the season. And Chattanooga all of a sudden with just under two and a half to go has a two point advantage. It's crunch time now. Big time moments. Mark Freeman off the glass. That one's not going to go. Offensive rebound, Shaquem Johnson. He gets it to go. And we are back to being tied at 60 with now two minutes to play. That shot circled the drain and went in. Caldwell finds Kenich. Kenich wanted the three. He's well short. Rebound to Freeman. He's going to push the floor and pull it out here for TSU. Back to the bucket, got it stripped, and it went off of Freeman's knee, and it's a turnover for the sophomore who has played such a tremendous game today, but a key defensive stop that time by the Mocs. They're gonna try to carry, and then he had it stripped, and it just bounced off. Sometimes that's just how it bounces. That was A.J. Caldwell, the redshirt junior with the strip. Biggest one of the season. 90 seconds left here at Gentry. Malachi Smith working on Barrett. Now that one is stripped on this end of the floor. Joe Hall's gonna run. He's got a three on two. Shaquem Johnson off the glass. He got fouled. Could not get the bucket, but will go to the line for two. The Tiger bench so wanted that to fall. So it's Shaquem Johnson, the senior out of Youngstown, Ohio who has had such a fine afternoon. 33% free throw shooter is not able to connect on the first. He the, has had so many struggles at the charity strike. You can't have them here. These are, mo these need to knock down these free throws. Shaquem gets the second and a big one for the senior. We got a one point game here, CJ. Minute and 15 to go on a Tuesday matinee in December. See, this is why you get into this business, for moments like this. Malachi Smith to the bucket, he gets fouled, and he'll go to the line. 
as the bench for Tennessee State. Not too much pleased about that foul call. But number 13 in blue and yellow will go to the line and shoot two. Let's see what we see, Smith. Yeah, I am not sure about that. And I believe that is Josh Linder's fifth personal foul. So a key loss here down the stretch with 66 seconds to go. He fouls out with 13 points in the game. He played a real good game today. Malachi Smith, an 83% shooter. That's fifth best in the SOCON so far this season. The captain of this squad with two big free throws coming up. He connects on the first in those neon green shoes. Type of shoes I'd wear. Malachi Smith, free throw, transfer from Wright State. Had to sit out all of last season, showing what he can do as he gives the Mocs a one-point lead here with 66 seconds left. Biggest possession of the game right here. One minute, one minute in This is the battle at the top of the screen, folks. Freeman and Smith all afternoon long. He wants the pick from Johnson. Freeman still working on Smith, couldn't get the switch to the bucket, but a foul on the floor. And I believe now this is gonna be a one and one situation for Mark Freeman. So a chance to tie the game and take the lead. Freeman on the season came in just 90%, only 90% from the free throw line. And he misses back iron on the free throw. A 90% free throw shooter misses here late. Oh, man. And now a timeout by the Mocs and Lamont Paris as they cling to a 62-61 lead with 41 seconds left. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedules real quick. First four. For TSU, we're gonna look at TSU, Austin P. They're pretty much OVC from here on out unless they reschedule a game. Austin P, SEMO, UT Martin, SEMO again, and Jacksonville State. Of course, no. TSU is 0-2 in OVC play. No rest for the weary. After this, you gotta gear up for another big one. Matt Figures got that program rolling up in Clarksville. Of course, Austin P, the favorites in the OVC, picked to win it all. But here we go, CJ, 41.2 left. There's about 18 seconds shot clock to game clock differential. If, if... Those upcoming schedules, by the way, were brought to you by Graduate Nashville Hotel. Make Graduate Nashville your home base for game day in Music City. If you're Tennessee State, head coach Brian Collins, do you foul here? I don't think you need to foul. You can put yourself in a good position by stop, getting one stop. You don't need to foul because the shot clock is still a factor here. And of course, every foul from here on out committed by the Tigers, the Mocs will have two at the line, but just one for the Tigers if the Mocs commit a foul. Of course, on the floor, if you're Lamont Paris, you're getting the ball into Smith's hands, correct? Um, yeah. So this is Smith who has it. It looks like Tennessee State will play defense and play it straight up. This is now the freshman Walker trying to figure out what to do with the basketball here. He's got to go. He's got six to shoot. He's about at half court. Walker and a timeout is called and a really heads up timeout called at that time by Lamont Paris in his fourth season at the helm. As he can see, his freshman was kind of lost. I need you to see what Ravel Moody was doing on the defensive end. His feet did not stop moving for 19 seconds. I, I love what he did. Yeah, obviously, I'm not sure what uh, the mocks were drawing there out of the timeout, but that clearly wasn't it. A little bit of miscommunication, but also good off-ball defense that time by Tennessee State. Okay, well, with four seconds left on the shot clock, 21.4 to go. If you're Lamont Paris, what's the play here? 
You got to find a way to get more movement and get the ball in Malachi Smith's hands. So that was Chattanooga's last time out. Tennessee State still has one. One point game here at Gentry in Nashville. 21.4 ticks on the clock. This is inbounded to Smith. He's working on Barrett. Left hand no good, off the rim. Offensive rebound that time by Smith. He puts it in and good. A big time offensive rebound after the miss for Malachi Smith, which gives the Mocs a three point lead with 15.6 to go. Absolutely monster shot from Malachi Smith. He absorbed the contact and was able to bounce it off of the back to the to the net take a look at the replay here Smith of course working with four seconds on the shot clock put it up CJ I almost think he was a little bit surprised that the ball landed in his hands again because he actually could have pulled that out if he wanted to and tried to earn it at the free throw line I think the confusion there was that the Tigers thought that the shot clock had hit zero with the ball bounced off of the rim and when the chat uh, I don't know who it was who gathered it they thought that the shield was a shot clock violation so there was a quick collapse which allowed the putback to go in Malachi Smith the redshirt sophomore out of Belleville Illinois the right state transfer sat out all of last season now has 27 points tonight in Nashville at the Gentry Center to try and allow his team to go 9-0 and for the first time in school history. That was a loose ball. That was Malachi Smith with a tap around and a put back. All right, Incredible effort. 15.8 to go. If you're Tennessee State, what's the play out of the break? Put it in Mark Freeman's hands. And do you go for the three here, or do you play for the two and then play the foul? You try and draw the contact, I think. You need to, draw, to get, go to the him, go, get him to the cup, trying to draw some contact. And of course, Chattanooga could foul if they want to here and put Tennessee State at the line. This is Freeman going right to the basket, lays it in, and good. So they took the two, 8.9 to go. Chattanooga out of timeout. A quick foul on Freeman, who just scored the bucket and that will send Smith to the line. So they did go quick to that time, did TSU. Again, if you have it, take it, right? Oh yeah, they, and, they, and they were instructed not to foul, they give him the bucket. So two shots coming up for Malachi Smith, fifth in the SOCON, 83% coming into the night. Hoping for a miss is what their Tigers are hoping. Smith connects on the first. So that keeps it now at a two point game. And this is a key free throw coming up here for the sophomore. Smith buries both. So clutch at the line. 8.8 .8 to go. Tigers inbound. Mark Freeman with the ball. He's got five to shoot, has to go three. Step back three for the tie. Off the front iron, and that will do it. A 66-63 nail-biting victory. A historic victory for the Chattanooga Mocs. And for the first time ever, CJ, they go 9-0 to start the season. What an effort. And they rode the back of Malachi Smith. 29 big points, including the free throws that iced the game. What a performance from Malachi Smith. What more can you say about Lamont Paris' squad? They only had about eight active players tonight. Same thing they had against the 7-0 Blazers on Saturday. This is and a big have... win, and I love the group that he's got in Chattanooga. 66-63 in favor of the Mocs. What a nail biter here on a Tuesday matinee. Oh boy, it feels like March.
It for CJ Ecke, Jonathan Owens, Bryce Robinson, and the rest of our crew, our next broadcast will be on the 30th. It's a doubleheader between Tennessee State men's and women's. I'm Alex Gold saying so long from Nashville, Tennessee, and the Gentry Center, where the final score is the Chattanooga Mox 66, Tennessee State Tigers 63. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation for ESPN. Enjoy your Christmas.